I am an extremist. I am an extremist because of literature that I read, because of software that I use that promotes privacy and anonymity online, because the literature that I read explores topics in open and free computing. Because government agencies around the world label countless groups of people just like me because of what we use to browse the internet and what we use to check our email. When I stumbled across a cybersecurity weakness at my high school that somebody could have used to take down our entire school district's computer infrastructure, I couldn't do anything about it. I couldn't tell anyone it existed or even how to fix it because I would have been expelled or even charged. Weaknesses like this potentially still exist to this day. When my father introduced me to the computer as a, at a young age, as so many parents did with their kids, knowing full well that it was the future, it was the latest frontier in human discovery that was bound to swell. I gained an exposure into how these technologies not only make our world go round, but how they've enabled us to explore new worlds together. I want to explore with you a movement that is confronting the largest privacy violation in human history. It's called open source software. I want you to be an extremist. I want you to join me. At the age of three, I had memorized the keystrokes in order to mount the now non-existent floppy disk drive in order to try my hand at spelling and math games on the family computer. At the age of 11, I had discovered code and Linux the pillars of which have shaped some of my utmost core beliefs. Code itself is a series of instructions that we give a computer in order for it to complete a task. We then hand this code out in a way that's easily digestible as software. But just as we've been able to forge and shape masterful pieces of technology using this mysterious and unwieldy cryptic medium that is code, we've been able to lock each other out of that same mystery using those same unwieldy and mysterious tactics. We write code as a method of communication, like a language, yet it's unintuitive. It's full of numbers and values that we can't easily understand. It's because we're not talking to another human being, we're talking with a computer. Let's imagine that software is like buying a cake. Cake has ingredients like butter, sugar, and salt. Software has ingredients too. But imagine if you walked into the grocery store to pick up a cake and the baker wouldn't tell you what's in it. What's more, what if it was illegal for you to find out? Software has ingredients too. Adding a friend, shopping online, these are software ingredients. These are easy to taste. And that scenario is a closed source philosophy. Now imagine, when you walk into the grocery store to pick up your cake, the ingredients that are labeled clearly on the back. We're allowed to inquire and challenge what we can consume in our software just like we can today with our food. This is an open source philosophy. It is the spearhead of a movement designed to defend and protect the way we access the single largest collection of information that's ever been gathered on Earth, the internet. How many of you uh, used an alarm clock on your phone to wake up this morning? How many of you use a GPS app from time to time to get around? How many of you bought your tickets for this event on our website? That's all software. Software brought you here in one way or another. If you can imagine where software has brought you tonight, can you imagine where software has brought you your entire life? Software powers nearly every aspect of our lives. It's amazing. The tools that we've created together are beautiful, but there's a dark side that isn't beautiful. Ask yourself, how do websites that don't make any money off of you, that don't cost you any money, like social media, how do they make any money at all? They make lists. Lists upon lists of information about its users. Our names, birthdays, genders, where we go to work, which coffee shop we spend the most time at. I've always thought it funny that my mom refuses to tell her friends her birthday 
which he tells Facebook. This is just one of a multitude of examples of when a company on the internet takes the trust that we give them for granted. Now, this information, it's being compiled into advertising data, marketing data, shopping and social trends, monitoring popular opinions voiced on the internet, the thoughts that are on the minds of the people. If we made a list of some of your Google searches, what would they look like? What would you look like? Would I see fear? Would I see curiosity? Would I see joy? Imagine what kind of profile we could draw of you as a person if we had 100 Google searches, or 1,000, or every Google search you've ever made in your entire lifetime. Well, you and I don't have access to that kind of information, but someone does. They know what to do with it. They know how to make it work for them. So how do we check what's in our software like we do with our food? We look for the open source license. It's like an FDA approval stamp. If we don't see the open source license, we can't see or taste all the ingredients. We don't know how they can harm us. We have open source web browsers like Mozilla Firefox, open source search engines like DuckDuckGo. These are things that are all freely and readily available at our disposal. We just have to start using them. Now, imagine you have started using these tools. What does our portrait of you look like now? Well, now it's blurred. The colors, they bleed into one another, and soon it doesn't look much like a portrait at all. I mean, this is now a painting that cannot be used by someone trying to steal your online information. Open source proves that we're better together, and that collaborative technology can't hide what it does from its users. But it goes beyond software. It's a philosophy. It's the way we use it and the way we think about it. And our ability to build oftentimes moves faster than our ability to look inside ourselves. Sometimes our appetite for new technology moves faster than our brains. But the honest truth is, we cannot contain technology. We cannot contain advancement. We cannot contain progress. So why does progress have to sacrifice our information? Why do companies and lawmakers think they can contain our right to privacy? And where does this bring us? To a duality of action or inaction. We can keep using closed source software and keep having our information taken, or we can use open source software and keep our information safe. Thank you. <laughs>